it's always nice when you have medical professionals that get involved with the 60 up because we do have um, people that don't believe it's real, don't believe that um, it can be as good as we say it is. And the only way that we can say it's that good is because of your results. Um, so I'd love you guys to go and take a look at a post that came from Dr. Dan Schwartz. Uh, he left it yesterday and I love again when doctors reach out because often doctors are the biggest skeptics. When they don't know something because it's new and the 60 up is relatively new, sometimes they push it back um, because they don't understand it or know it well enough yet. So when we get a doctor that comes in that has physical dis disabilities and they wrote the review, it's so inspirational because I know how it will make other people believe as well. And our whole thing is if you do it, you'll get the results. And so inspiring people to get up and get going and actually do it. And we saw that again with Graham. To, you know, he said he's been sitting on the board. As far as not sitting on it, he's been like, it's there, but he hasn't been using it. You've got to use it. Um, Rosa, yes, it's a great post. Uh, Chad, great to see you here, mate. Carol, great to see you both here as well. Um, Georgia. I know Georgia because I left you a message. Uh, Georgia served in the Air Force, if I'm correct, right, Georgia? So thank you for the service. I think I said that before, but, uh, you know, thank you again. It's great to see you. The DC metro area. I hope it's cooling down because I guess it's been really humid up there. Um, so this is my message for today, and then we're going to get on with the workout. Um, there's a saying that I love. When people are struggling, that's the most critical time. Um, because when things are going great, we keep going. When things are going tough, that leads to the saying that I love. It's before every great breakthrough, there's a greater breakdown. Before every great breakthrough, there's a greater breakdown. Why is that? Because that's where most people stop. And to have a great breakthrough, you have to take yourself beyond the norm. <clears throat> I got a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> You've got to take yourself beyond the norm and become extraordinary. But the beautiful thing is the determination of doing that is your character. So again, before every great breakthrough is a greater breakdown because that, that challenge has to find those that really want it, that are willing to go through the challenge and become everything that they're meant to be. So if things begin to struggle, if you begin to have those doubts, if you begin to have those questions in your mind, that is the moment of the breakdown. That's the one that has to reveal who you are. And we see it where some people said, I've been on the board twice, it didn't work for me and I'm sending it back. And we reach out and said, hang on a minute, it's not an immediate fix, although we have had people that have felt a difference in 10 minutes um, because their muscles begin to engage and they get excited. But it depends where you start from and where you end. So don't give up. Don't let yourself be less than your best. Notice that point where you begin to question and begin to wonder if it's going to work for you and push through because we have so many success stories. We know it works. We know it works. This again was not built to sell. This was built to help Bob Eubanks. And then somebody else said, help me. And then somebody else said, help me because they saw his great results. And before we know it, we have an amazing community. All of you are so amazing. And um, you guys are living examples of your power and the 60 up has just helped you rediscover that. So with that being said, let's go on and get this workout going. Okay, so if you notice I have the short bands on today, we're gonna to be doing the short bands and we're gonna be doing the long bands. Um, and I'll give you plenty of time to change those up. But I'm excited for today's workout because I got some good things from Kathy's workout yesterday as well that I saw that I feel was really good for people to be able to engage. So the first thing we're going to do, all I want you to do is just lift your right heel and down. Now lift your left heel and down. If I'm sideways, right heel down, left heel down, right heel down left heel. Now the way you do this is just push your knee forward and keep your toe on the ground. What we're doing here is we're activating the bend of the foot and we're learning how to be able to strengthen up the toe area, both to be able to go up on your toes, but just as importantly to be able to push back if you begin to feel like you're falling or you're leaning too much one way 
or falling to the side, we want to be able to push back. So it's just that knee pushing forward, heel comes off the ground, and you've got that little bend in your toe. Great for neuropathy as well. If you wanna go slower, go slower. We wanna get that action going all the way down to the toes. Now we're gonna change it a little bit on the right foot. I now want you to push your knee slightly to the side and feel that pressure going on your little toe. So it's just you're pushing the knee very slightly. Keep the board still. You'll notice I like to put my hands on top of the poles off and I can still move them down and grab them. But this feels much more comfortable for me now that you know my balance obviously is relatively good and you lose the fear. Keep the board centered. Okay, good. Now from here, all I want you to do is go up on your right toe, pull it back, pull the, le the right toe up so you're on your heel. Let's try that one. I'll do it from the side so you can see. Go up on your toe, come back. Now straighten the right leg and pull that toe up. Now let's go to the left foot. You push your toe up, bring it down, pull on the heel. Now up on the toe, pull it back, back on the heel. And when you do that, let's just stay on the left foot for a minute. I want you to just feel this. As you do that, you'll notice your left leg straightens, your butt goes back very slightly, and you're just pulling on that toe. Great exercise for drop foot. Even if you can't get that toe off of the ground to begin with, you're beginning to reignite the tendons and the muscles that help have that action. Good, let's go do it just on the right foot. Push, down, straighten the leg, pull the heel, uh, the toe up, sorry. Heel up, toe up. Heel up, toe up. Heel up, toe up. We go two more, heel up and toe up. There you go, good. Now just shake your legs out. We got some great exercises today I'm really excited about. What I want you to do right now is bring your toe up. We're gonna to tap behind the number one and bring it back down. Tap behind the number one, bring it back down. Right foot, one and down, one and down. If you notice, we're going a little bit slower today, not because we're going slow, the reason we're going slow is to give the brain time to feel the balance points so you feel comfortable. I know there's some people out there that are just starting that are having a really hard time with tapping. And one of the things we want to do is slow it down to build that strength of messaging from the brain to the feet through the legs. And we've got a new exercise today as well that I'm excited to share with you. Good. Now what we want to do, I want you to tap on the one Tap on the one, bring it down. Left foot, one, across and down. And one, across and down. And notice the very subtle change of pressure as you change your foot across the center and bring it down. You'll notice there's a very slight change in the leg that's on the ground to be able to support the change. And it's such a small change but this is the brain figuring it out. Last time on the left. Good, now we're gonna to go to two and two, so we have slightly more of a reach across, and again, notice the change in the on the leg that's on the ground, the balance pressure point. So we go two, go two, and bring it across. We start going out, across, and down. Two, across, down. Slightly wide, across the foot, down, up, cross, down, out, cross, down, out, cross, and down. Good, now in between this one, I just want you to now just lift your heels up. If I'm in here, you'll notice all I'm doing, my toes are staying on the ground, I'm just getting some activation of the feet. Now that we've got the pressure points, you'll see how this is gonna build up on the next exercise. Okay, we're gonna come back to standing still. We're gonna go three and three and back. Now, if this is a long stretch and you feel off balance, go back to the two and two. Remember, as you stretch, the leg you're standing on has to bend a little bit and use the poles for stabilization if you need to. So we go three, all the way across three and back down. Let's go left foot, wide, bend the knee, wide, 
and back down. There's no rush here. So find your balance on the leg you're standing on, bend the knee, find the balance on the leg you're standing on, and come back, left foot. Balance, balance, back. And balance, balance, back. And wide. Think about the leg you're standing on. And if you need to look at the board to find those threes, that's okay. But once you've felt it, let the brain govern your foot. And every now and again, just check. And if you miss the mark, it's okay. You don't have to be perfect. We're getting the body feeling and moving again. Last time each side, three, three, and down. And three, three, and down. Good, so what we do is just shake your legs out. I'm gonna grab a quick drink of water. I was out this morning early, and I feel a little dehydrated from some of the workout that I was doing. You know what helps? When you open the bottle cap before you lift it up. Every now and again, you have one of those moments. I guess I should have used my eyes to look there. Okay, so what? this is a whole new exercise, and this is gonna be very challenging because what we're working on is the leg on the ground. What I want you to do is put your foot on the number three, your right foot on number three, and let the board touch the ground. So you're gonna go here. Now, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna push back on the left leg, keep the right leg on the board, and bring the board back to the middle and see if you can balance. I can really feel this one working. It's a great exercise. Good, push back onto the number three. I'm here now, keep the, left, the right foot on the board, lean back on your left foot, and let the board come back up. So I'm taking the pressure off of my right foot. I have more pressure on my left, almost all my weight, because if I needed to, I could tap the board. Push down, now come back, and feel more strength. You're strengthening up that left leg. I'm push, and I come back. One more, push on the board. Now come back, let the board be in the middle and I could really lift my foot off. Now bring the foot back. Let's try it on the left hand side. Put your left foot on the number three, lean across so you can feel the strength. Now bring your weight back onto your right leg, bring the board to the middle and your foot is still on the board but there's almost no weight on it. Push back again. We push back, my leg is strong. Now I push back onto my right leg Bring the board to the middle. If I took my hands off, the board should be balanced, but my foot is still on the board. Push, feel the strength, push back, feel that balance. My foot's still on the board and push back, feel that strength, push back, find that bow. Oh, I began to go, but luckily, the strength in my little toe on my right foot was able to push back and keep my balance. Now bring the leg down. We're gonna do this again, but we're now gonna add something to it for those that want to advance. If, you, if you're not ready to advance, just keep doing the strengthening exercise and the balance awareness. So watch what we're gonna do. You can do it with me. Same exercise, step on the three, hold it for a second. Now push back, find the balance. Now tap the board three times. One, two, three. Now push the board to the side. If you're not tapping, just push with me. Now push back, find your balance, board's in the middle. One, two, three. Step on the board, push to the side, feel that leg strong. Push back and find your balance. One, two, three, and last time. Step on the board, push the, the weight, come back onto your left leg, feel yourself balance, tap. One, two, three, and bring the leg back down. Left hand side. Place the left foot on number three. Push, feel that thigh muscle strong. Feel your stomach that there's a certain tightness in there. Good, now push back. Find the board balance, tap. One, two, three. Step on the board, lean across. Feel that leg strengthening. This is to help you go upstairs. Push back and tap, one. Two, three, if you're wobbling, no problems, because all you're doing is you're working on re-engaging the connection and the strength. Push back onto that left. Now, when I say that this helps you go up and down stairs, watch this, as you push, feel how that body weight is on there. This would be this action, if you were doing it to go up a stairs. So we're strengthening the legs. 
Come back to that middle balance. Tap, one, two, three, and come and step down. Now this is the last bit that I'm excited about. I haven't tried this one. And the reason I haven't tried it is I want to experience it with you, but I thought it. I thought, let's try this and see how it goes. So place your foot on number three, but don't let the board touch the ground. Now slide that foot all the way across to three, slide it on the board all the way to three, and bring it down. Let's try the left foot. Board stays in. Place the foot on number three. Now drag that foot all the way across the board. It never leaves the board. I can really feel and drag it back. My right leg is constantly doing this, finding the change in balance. Let's go again. Put your right foot on three. Bend the left leg slightly. Now drag that foot. It's almost no pressure. If I put pressure on it, the board's going to go. So I'm trying to keep it where that foot has almost no weight on it and bring it down. And let's go left side. Here, drag it all the way across, drag it all the way back, and down. Good, just a quick little exercise for you to try. If you weren't able to get it to balance, keep practicing it. If you felt that the weight was going and your leg was wobbling, I love that. And the reason I love it is because you're working it. Once you've got it, you're maintaining. You're never not doing anything. If you can't get the exercise to be as we're trying to get it perfectly balanced, you're working it. So don't get frustrated. Remember, before every great breakthrough is a greater breakdown that challenges your resolve. Do I want to get it right? Do I want to do it or not? And the answer is, you're good enough to do it, so do it. Okay, next thing I want to do, step up on number two and put your left foot on number two and just rocking side to side. Trying to see who it was that just said hi. I think it's Donna. Good morning, Donna. Barbara, you're laughing at my water. Terry, good morning. Good to see you. Vicky, great to see you here. Good, we're just rocking side to side. Just feel it nice and relaxed. There you go, good. Now what I want you to do, push down with your left foot and step off of the board. Now we're gonna do something that's to do with stepping up steps or sidewalks. I want you to step your right foot on number two and push. I want you to lift, put all your weight on the number two. Lift your left leg up, place it now on number two, and now push. Lift your right leg up and step back off of the board. Why are we going slow? because I want to have that dynamic muscle en engagement not built on momentum, built on strength. So put your left foot on number two and put your weight there. Step up, your back foot comes off of the ground. Now lift your right leg up, hold it there. Feel the left leg strength, strong. Now push the right foot, push down, lift the left leg up, place the left leg behind, and step back. So let's go through the same speed. I'm stepping onto the sidewalk. I'm pu pushing up on the sidewalk. We've got control. I lift my knee up. I'm holding a zip now. I'm going up a second step. Now I'm going to step on that second step and transfer my weight. The next leg is ready to go up the next step now. Except for the exercise, we're going to step back and come down. Last time on the left hand side. So step on the sidewalk or the step. Push your body weight up. Back foot is off the ground. Now lift as if you're stepping up the next step or bringing your foot onto the pavement. Now step the two, put the pressure on the other leg, lift this leg, good, hold. Not moving, the brain is still constantly working and step back, good. Okay, so what I wanna do now, we're gonna go into a little bit of a faster exercise. Step up on two and two and just rock side to side. There you go, just getting these legs moving. Again, for those people that haven't been part of the program for long, this is an exercise that I think is one of the most valuable to do when you do it in front of your TV, not as a workout, but at nighttime you're watching TV. And as I say, the reason why is you'll find that you'll be rocking and not even know you're rocking because your mind is gonna be on the TV and your brain is gonna be on your body. 
That is subconscious thinking of balance and movement. And that's where we want to get back to. So you're not thinking about every step. The body is feeling it. So please do this exercise in front of your sofa, 20 minutes a night. When the commercials come on, find your balance. When the commercials are off, go back on and just rock side to side. I'm amazed at the results just this movement has in brain body connection. Okay, come and find your balance. Bend the knees slightly, feel the pressure points in your feet. There you go, good, and rock side to side again. We've got a few combinations of these because I want to today integrate the feet and integrate the muscles with feeling. And you're gonna see how we're gonna change this up a little bit. Again, doing some exercises maybe we haven't done before. Good, find your balance. Excellent. Feel the pressure points. You'll feel the pressure points changing from your big toe area or the inside of your foot to the outside of your foot. And just holding it is fantastic because the brain is constantly evaluating and you're constantly changing the change in your body. Good, rock side to side again. You're doing fantastic. Keep it going, come on, we got this. Now find your balance. Oh, I went off a little bit on there, but the great thing is if I go off, I'm able to correct it. Love it. Now we're gonna do one more time, and this time we're gonna to go to, again, multitasking the brain. Find your balance and run your fingers. Have those fingers running up and down the, the handles. My thumb stay on the top so I can grab it if I don't feel safe or begin to lose my balance. Now we're working on balance and um, the finite movement of the fingers. So the brain now is thinking double thoughts. Incredible exercise. Again, getting that brain activation. Your brain is the most powerful part of you. Let's build it and then take that body to the level of the brain. Good. Now what I want you to do, push down with your left foot, Turn your right foot to 45 degrees. So I'd be facing, but you can keep your foot roughly on number two. Push on the right foot, turn the left foot to 45 degrees. Now you'll notice how we're turning slightly sideways. I want you to rock forward and backwards. We're working on a 45 degree angle of balance. You're gonna notice when we go to balance, you'll have on the front foot more pressure on your little toe and on your back foot more pressure on your right toe. Great exercise if you find when you turn a corner, you begin to feel off balance. Now, find your balance. A lot harder than it looks. Good, and rock back and forward. We do three in each position. Good, I want you to feel the pressure on your front foot. Feel the pressure. Notice my body isn't leaning forward and back. My body's staying centered. I'm pushing with my feet. Now, come and find your balance. There you go, perfect. And rock forward and backwards. Now on this one, we're gonna play the, the fingers again when you find your balance. So we're always going to another level of training the brain with the body. Good, and find the middle. Once you found your middle point, let me to rethink this one, then let your fingers start playing. There you go. And again, you'll find this is a lot harder to do than the facing forward because now we're working on the brain on a different angle than it's used to be going. I can feel I'm constantly having to adjust and feel. Good, and push back with your left foot. Turn your right foot to the front. Push with the right, turn the left foot to the front. Now stay here, turn the left foot to 45 degrees. Push down with the left foot. Turn the right foot to 45 degrees. And here we go, we're working on the left-hand side more now. Again, as if we're walking down and we wanna suddenly turn the corner into, into a nice restaurant, wouldn't that be nice? And go in there and get some great food. Good, and find your balance. You'll notice that your left leg is slightly more bent than your right leg, but you're constantly adjusting the pressure you're having. Good, and rock backwards and forwards again. Here we go, good, you're doing great. Good, and find your balance. Good, feel those pressure points. Awesome, and rock forward and backwards again. Last one, check your feet are still 45 degrees turn towards the, the corner, towards the, the front pole, and find your balance. 
And now play your fingers. Feel those legs, feel your muscles strong in your legs. Feel your core is strong. It's interesting, when I went to touch my core, my hand stopped. Let's see if I can keep my other hand going and I'm just touching my core. So again, we're always challenging the brain for new things. Good, and rock forward and back and push on the back foot. Now what I want you to do is keep the left foot turned 45 degrees, push your foot out and turn your right foot 45 degrees. So we're very slightly now with our feet opened up. Now what I want you to do is just rock side to side. And you'll notice in here, we're working the inner thighs now. You'll notice it's different. This is a um, ballet move, or I should say, it's not a ballet move, it's a life move, but ballet dancers do it. It really strengthens up the inner thighs and leads to the plie. So what I want you to do now is find your balance and just bend your knees slightly and hold that position. You'll notice, make sure your butt is tucked under, your abs are tight. Your knees should be in line with your toes. Don't let your knees come in, let your knees go out. So we really work that inner thigh area and stand back up and just rock side to side. Not completely straight, your knees are very slightly bent. This is a great workout for strengthening the legs and feeling the different pressure points. Instead of just being forward or sideways, we're now working at all angles of change of direction. Good, find your balance. Go into a very slight knee bend. Again, keep those knees in line with your toes so you're not bringing them in and putting pressure on your knees. When you put it in this position, the strength comes from your thighs, not the pressure on your joints. Keep that pelvis tucked under, abs tight. Good. And last time, a little stand up, rock side to side. You should really feel those inner thighs working. I really miss the ballet days. It was the hardest exercise. I was obviously a, a trainer. I've worked in gyms. I've played soccer at the highest level. I've done so many things, you know, raced bikes, so many things. Nothing was harder and more challenging than ballet. Okay, knees go out, find that balance. Now, here we go, run those fingers. Run those fingers. Good, keep that pelvis, don't let the butt stick out. Try and pull that pelvis forward slightly. Keep those knees three seconds, two, one, and stand back up. There you go, good. Bring your feet to face the front, and you'll notice how you relieve some of that pressure off of your thighs. Great job, remember, if you need to stop, if you need to go slower, if you just wanna come back to basics, stop and get your water, you can. We've got one more exercise to do, but before I do that, I'm going to step off the board and get a drink of water. Top open, cheers. Mm. Okay, step back up on two and two. Now I'm gonna push down with your left foot, turn your right foot 90 degrees. So I'm facing the right hand side. Push with that foot, turn the left foot, and we're just, if you notice, my, my feet are kind of inside the two and two, we're not all the way on the three. Now, if you want to stay here for safety, you can push here. If you feel comfortable, take your hand and turn your shoulders to face the side. But again, if you don't feel comfortable, you can grab, you can put two hands on here as well, so you can adjust. Safety is always first. Okay, so what we wanna do here, now look to the side, don't look at me, look to the side and find your balance. I'm gonna move my arm here. And rock backwards and forwards again. There you go, good. And find your balance. You'll notice that your back heel, your left heel, is slightly off of the board and push forwards and backwards again. Now find your balance and run those fingers. If you're on two, run those fingers. Good, and push back on the left foot. Turn your right foot to the forward, bring your left foot to the forward. Have a little bit of a rock just to loosen those feet up. Now turn your left foot to the left. Push on the left foot, turn the right foot to the side. Hold on with both handles if you want, or move your right hand to the front handle, or keep them both on here if you'd like. Here we go, just rocking forward and backwards. Awesome, now 
Find that balance. And rock forward and backwards again. And if I'm talking, that's great. You don't have to look at the screen. It, uh, it uh, is one of those things that I want you to focus on your brain, on the direction you're facing. Here we go, find your balance. Remember, left heel may be a little off of, uh, sorry, the right heel may be a little off of the board. And rock forward and backwards last time. Remember on this one, once you found your balance, run your fingers. If I'm on two hands, run those fingers. Here we go, find your balance. And run those fingers. Good, and rock forward and backwards. Good, bring your left foot to face the front, bring your right foot to face the front. And I've got one challenge for you. Now, if some of you don't want to uh, take this challenge, that's fine, just rock side to side. And when I say balance, just find your balance. We got a little uh, extra in here because I like to advance these exercises as well for those that have moved a little further along, probably from doing it a little bit longer. Good, all you're gonna do is try and find your balance and run your fingers. That's the first part. Good, and try changing the speed of your fingers so you can go fast and you can go slow because that's your brain sending messages and controlling your movement. Now, rock side to side. What you're gonna do here is find your balance and once you've found your balance, you're gonna close your eyes. The poles will hold you. If you get a little uncomfortable, open your eyes. Or if you wanna do it with just one eye closed and then close the second one, feel free. Go ahead and find your balance now, close your eyes. Notice how you're really aware even more of your pressure points. Good, open your eyes and come back to rocking. And I notice I haven't done this in a little while. It's the first time I've been on the board and closed my eyes in probably, well, when was the last time we did it? Maybe four weeks ago, five weeks ago. I noticed that I wasn't as reactive. I could feel it the same, but I wasn't able to control my balance quite as much. Good, well this time we're gonna do a combo. You're gonna close your, you're gonna find your balance, you're gonna close your eyes, and you're gonna run your fingers. This is just an advanced movement of balance control and reaction time. So find your balance, close your eyes, and run those fingers. If you feel comfortable, if not, keep your eyes open, run the fingers, or close the eyes and hold those fingers. And I can feel I'm not so great at reacting today. I'm getting a little better. I'm over, overcompensating. Good, and slowly open your eyes, slowly, and just rock side to side. Again, so many ways we can have combos in here. But great job just being here and trying these. It's, you're, you're awesome. So again, we're gonna move on now. <clears throat> what I want you to do is step back off of the board, grab your water really quick, and then we're gonna turn the board around and use the red ball. Okay, so um, it's very simple. Just lift the, lift the board up with the poles and just turn it a little bit or you can walk around and bring it around. And if it's heavy, you can just kind of lift it and drop it and lift it and drop it until it's ready. There you go. Okay, hopefully you can see the red ball. Yeah, you can, I can just see it in the camera. Now, all I want you to do is put your right foot right in the middle of the ball. That's the ball of your foot in the middle of the ball. Your toe should not be ahead of the front. Don't put your foot here. Keep the ball of your foot because we want to strengthen up the toes in here. Good, all I want you to do now is roll your knee and keep the pressure on the ball. So you're pushing down on the ball, but you're rolling and you should feel the change of pressure from the little toe to the big toe. There you go, good. Now what I want you to do is hold it there and just press onto the ball. Press onto the ball. Put your weight onto that ball. Feel it pushing down. There you go, good. Now, what I want you to do is now lift your heel up and down. I'll go sideways, so I'm up and down. Up and down. And keep that board balanced as you're doing it. If you want the ultimate challenge, take your hands off and see if you can put the pressure on and raise that heel 
without pushing on the little toe. It's a great indicator of the middle. Now what I want you to do is now press on the ball, hold it there, and bring your foot down. It's a lot of work on one leg. Here we go, put the left foot on the ball. Good, and a little bit of pressure, and just roll that knee. So big toe, little toe, big toe, little toe. And notice while you're doing this, that you haven't even thought about the leg that's on the ground. You're focused here, but the brain is taking over the feeling of, what, of, of your balance stability, which is really how this whole start of 60 Up came about, was recognizing the brain's power to feel no different than a baby. Good, and I'll explain that one in a minute. Put your foot in the middle, good. Now what I want you to do is just press on the ball and down. Press on the ball and back. Press on the ball and back. Press on the ball. Now, all I want from there, lift the heel up and down. Heel up and down. Heel up, keep that pressure. If you notice, I'm leaning on that foot up and down, up and down. Now, put the pressure on. Maybe take your hands off, see if the board is equal. Notice how your back leg's supporting and step back down again. Good, shake those legs out. Great job, again, we're trying to go um, at a pace that allows the brain to feel and then something that can transfer itself into everyday life. And again, strengthening your toes is critical because your toes will be a pressure point to push back on or react to or feel your change of balance so you can keep yourself safe and not in a dangerous position of beginning to push over. So to demonstrate that, what I want you to do is begin to push on the outside of the little foot on your, uh, the little toe on your right foot and push back. Push on the little toe and push back. Now I don't want you going here and then pulling your body back. I want you to feel little toe, now push on that little toe and feel strong. Little toe, push on the little toe, feel strong. And push and back and push and back and push and back. Last one push and back and you'll notice if you're doing that you'll notice how there's a strength in your foot and it's so important to keep that foot supple and strong okay so that's all we're going to do on the red ball today because it's something you can practice at home and just do just that little exercise to increase the strength of your feet so now what i want you to do turn the board back around into here Last exercise we're going to do before we go to the bands, and then we're almost done. It's been a long workout today, but you can come back and do more of this later on as well. So I just started the clock because I know we've got a little exercise. Grab a quick drink of water. Um, I think I said hi. <laughs> yeah, it makes me laugh, Barbara. You see me in my water, how I forget. I even forgot to bring water one time. I had to run to the kitchen, remember, to get that. And then other times the water was empty. Another time I hadn't refreshed it and the water was, uh, ugh, tasted horrible. I think, that's where the, I think that's where you got the saying, right? Do you, do you get a bad taste in your mouth? Mm. There's another saying as well I like. It's like two cannibals are eating a clown. And one cannibal looks at the other one and says, does this taste funny to you? Yeah, okay, that's why I don't do stand-up com comedy. Hi, Pat. Uh, Barbara, you're laughing. Barbara, is that Icelandic language that you're writing? You're laughing. With who? No, I got what you're saying. You're laughing with me, not at me. It's okay. You can laugh at me. I'm fine. As long as everybody's laughing, I'm happy. But we can all make jokes in there. Okay, so here we go. Step up on the board. We're now going to go on a three minute walk. This is again the intermediate advanced level training. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, it's Betty. Let me just check. Never steps through the board. Betsy, how are you, Betsy? Thanks so much. Betsy's an animal. The reason I say you're an animal, Betsy, I can't keep getting workouts enough. For you, you keep wanting more and more, and I love that. I think I responded to your uh, comment on Facebook earlier before the class started. Okay, so we're gonna go into a three minute walk run. You choose what you want to do. The reason we're doing this is cardio, right? We've got to increase the heart. Um, instead of always going slow, we can do simple exercises to get the blood flowing. So here we go. You can just lift your feet if you want. 
Some of you, we've even gone up to five minutes on this on the more advanced days. And all we're doing is lifting those feet as if you're outside. Graham, I'm not sure if you're here with us today, but again, I know you said when you go outside, you feel like you're gonna fall. And then how long should you be able to walk for? Well, the reality is you should be able to long as, walk as long as you um, have the strength to walk. So that's why we increase this. Now, for some of you, we can go into a little run. So again, we're going just a little bit faster. You can change it down to a walk. What I would like you to do is three things. One, feel how you're feeling, feel your body. Don't do more than you feel on the edge of your comfort zone, right? We don't wanna be lazy, and none of you here are lazy, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But push yourself a little bit more than you think you can do, but feel your body, that's the first thing. Second thing, make sure that you adjust. So I can start running in here now, I'm going a little faster with my feet and everything's going great, but I begin to feel a little tired, I can slow down, so I want you to adjust. It, the adjustment can also be step off the board, take a break, <clears throat> um, we're one and a half minutes in. You can step off the board, take a break, get a drink of water and join back in again. There's no right in here, everything is right. There's, I should say there's no one way right, and there's certainly not a wrong either, except if you don't listen to your body, and you put yourself in an unsafe position where either you can't um, control your balance or the board. And then, so, was that the second thing? I can't remember what it was now. Good, so here we go. I want you to now pick up the pace if you can, and if you want to lift your knees. Oh, the third thing was, that's right, there's only two. The third thing is I want you to be soft with your feet. Don't slam your feet down. Think of padding. So the ball of the foot, or the toes touch, and then the heel touches. And if you want to go through this slow to feel it, just feel that toe begin to leave the board, and then slowly goes back down onto the board again. So here we go. We're running. And again, it, you really won't hear your feet. So go slow. And if you can't go fast without the feet slamming, go slow. We've got 30 seconds left. Start slow and build it up where you feel you're going faster. Excellent, excellent, here we go. Getting that cardio up. So Graham, I think over in America you say Graham. I think we, in England we say Graham, but I think it's Graham over here in America. Um, you can walk as long or as far as you train yourself to. And it comes down to your cardio and doing a little bit, and this is a great exercise for building up stamina for walking outside. Okay, come back and just walk slow. Let that heart rate come back. I'm pretty confident not many of you are gonna be going at this speed outside, but by training safely on the board, you'll be able to walk at this pace for a long time and feel comfortable, safe, and strong. Awesome. Okay, next on Tuesday, I'm gonna incorporate another version of this that I'm very excited about teaching on the run and you'll see what it is. I'm not gonna tell you, I could explain it to you, I could show you, but I wanna keep those surprises for those that show up, come to class and get to celebrate trying new things because every time you try something new, the brain is remapping itself, it's relearning, it's getting stronger. Okay, step back off of the board. Just feel the ground, just stand here for a second. Feel the ground. I want you to slowly start feeling how solid your feet feel on the ground now that you've gone off of a rocking motion. I want you to just bend your knees a little bit and come up and strength and tighten those thigh muscles and a small little knee bend. And as you knee bend, I want you to feel, push your feet into the ground. Now stand up tall and squeeze those muscles in your thighs, in your butt, in your core and relax. A little knee bend, last one. Stand up, tighten everything. Tighten everything. And relax. Good, shake those legs out. Go get your bands. Get the bands on the side of the board. Then we gotta also move the poles inside. One thing I'd recommend now is that you can always leave your short bands on the board. There's never a reason to have to take them off. Um, 
and the long bands I take on and take off relative to what I'm using. So from now on, if you feel comfortable, leave the short bands on. Don't have the long bands on at the same time because they'll flap around and I always worry about someone catching their foot in that band or it getting caught underneath the board. Okay, go ahead, change your bands. Uh, if the band's are already on, the easiest way to change the poles to the inside is take the band off and then get your, get your key. Push it to the inside and then put the band back on. And again, you don't have to use the bands. If you just want to do arm movements without the bands, that's fine as well. Here we go. Take off the band. Change the pole to the inside. Put the band back on. And there you go. The ball's back in. And we should be ready to get going. Okay, I've got a couple of exercises. These are short exercises. And again, I'm going to give you some changes in here that will allow you to have, um, what's the right way to put it? Changes that will allow you to have a new challenge if you want the challenge. Okay, first thing we're going to do, make sure both feet are on too. Now, for those of you that are just starting off, keep both feet in two, take hold, try and keep your balance, I'm going to do a bicep curl. For those of you that want the extra challenge, keep your left hand on, on the, um, what is it, the pole, and push on your right leg, and I want you to lift your left knee between the poles and give me a bicep curl in here. Now there's two different challenges. This is a balance challenge, where we're trying to keep the balance and work strength. This one is a strengthening exercise with pressure points, because you'll notice you have to put more pressure on your toe, your big toe, and not on the little because you'll begin to lean out. So pick the one you want to do. Either try and find that balance. And if you're just starting out, keep both feet on the board and just go to one side as well. So it's up to you to pick the challenge. I'm going to push one leg. My knee comes between. And here we go. We've got six bicep curls. Go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, last one, six. Good, place the foot on the ground, change up. Now let's push the other side, left side. I'm gonna grab here, keep my right hand on the pole, bring my right knee and lift it up. Feel the pressure on the big toe, the inside of your left foot. That's where you're strong. The left leg should be bent slightly and go. One, and two, and three. And squeeze that muscle as you curl, squeeze the bicep. Five, and last one, six. Good. Come and place it down, and now just rock side to side. Now, we're going to go on to the next exercise. Again, balance strength. And if you want to come back to these and do more of these later, this evening, this afternoon, to work that upper body, please do. Um, also, check out my uh, chair workout and the wheelchair workout where we do band work sitting down. That's something really fun to do later in the day if you're watching TV. Just put the board by the sofa, get the bands, and do your workouts with the bands as well while you're watching TV without even working on balance. Good. Take your left foot, place it on number three. Right foot is on number two. This is for a bigger challenge. If you want the simpler challenge, keep your feet on two and two. So three and two, find your balance, grab the band and lift your elbow as high as you can, keeping your palm not forward, but facing your thigh, as if you're running your hand, inside your hand, up your body. And here we go, six, one, keep that balance. Two, if you wanna put your feet on two and two to make it easier, please do, three, Four, five, and if you're wobbling and the board's touching the side, it's okay. There's no need, even if you wanted to push on the side and just do this exercise, it's okay to do because we're beginning to integrate all the muscle movements. Good, change feet, right foot goes on number three, left foot is on number two. I step into here, find my balance, and six. Here we go, one, and two and three, 
and four. Keeping that balance, work that balance. Five, last one, six. And you'll notice, place it back, if you're doing the three and two, you'll notice so much more work on the leg that's on the number two because you're taking about 65 to 70% of your body weight on that one side to keep the balance. Okay, next exercise, short bands. All we do, take the, take the band, and all I want you to do is bring it up halfway to a bicep curl. Now, from here, I got my feet on two and two, just twist the, shoulder, the arm slightly out. If I turn sideways on, you'll notice here, it's just a small little movement of in and out. Notice how my elbow doesn't leave my side. What this is, is a rotator cuff exercise that gets the shoulder turning slightly. So in here, small little move and back. Small little move, this is two, three. Keep that balance on two and two. Four, five, and six. Good, bring it back down. Let's take the left hand side. Turn your palm forward, tuck the elbow into your waist, stand tall. Make sure you're working on your balance by letting the muscles be firm. Bring into here now, just turn slightly, one. This is the English butler exercise, I'm gonna call it. Where you go, uh, would you like some caviar, ma'am? And I just present it to them, four. Here we go, five, that was so bad. Six, why is it we always think of English and think of butlers? Place it back down, good. Oh, the caviar, hello. I'm going to dinner with the queen today. All right, we're just rocking side to side. Okay, so we've worked today on biceps, we've worked on back lift strength with balance, and we've worked a little bit on the rotator cuff to work those um, muscles. And what I'm gonna be doing in the next few weeks is doing just a band workout video. So I'll present that, that will be on YouTube. So if you wanna spend a little bit more time working your upper body strength, I'm gonna do a separate video to take you through a bunch of exercises but we also have the 60 and 60 program on YouTube that has band workout in there. Okay, step back off of the board. Now we're gonna change and put the longer bands on. And look, people go, oh, it's such a pain to change the bands. It's actually part of a workout, it's real life activities. Uh, Rosa, yeah. Hello, how are you? My name is Prince Charles. Um, so again, put the longer bands on and you say, well, you know, it's a pain putting them on. It's everyday activity. It's bending down, it's feeding something, it's bringing it up, it's changing. And this whole workout and the whole 60 up is to let you do things that are, you have to do in real life. And so just doing these little changes are good because it's, it's getting your brain, it's getting your body, it's getting functional for life. So go ahead and change. I'm actually gonna take the shorter bands out. So there's both my shorter bands, I've taken them off. I'm gonna to grab today, uh, I'm gonna to go with the red bands today. Put them in the side. So the red bands go in the side pocket. And again, come back later. If you wanna do this later on when this is posted up, this will be on Facebook so you can watch it again. You can come back and do more of this workout later in the day. So they're here, just slide. I just pull those clips up and they come to the top. Okay, we've only got um, two exercises we're gonna do with the longer bands today. Take the clips and rotate them inside so we clear the front area. Now, take your right hand and grab the left band. Now, let me just show you. If you're gonna do this without a band, it's okay. You're just gonna work in here. But what we're doing in here is you're strengthening up your back muscles. That's what we wanna be working, the back muscles in here. So make sure you're squeezing the back muscles and that causes the arm to lift. Don't lift the arm because that becomes a shoulder exercise. Okay, so we're here. All I wanna do is find your balance on two and two. Bend your knees slightly and we're gonna go six back. One. And squeeze your back muscles. Two. Don't think of lifting your arm or the band. Three, think of squeezing that back muscle. Four, squeeze your back. This will help with your posture. It's gonna tighten up your back muscles 
and that should be six. So think about it. If you're a little bit like this, when you're walking, your back muscles are stretching and your chest muscles are becoming loose. So by strengthening the back muscles, by squeezing them, the back muscles get stronger and you go back into a good position. That's why we do this exercise. Okay, here we go. On the other side, I take my left hand on the right band, I stand tall. I think about my back muscle, the, the left hand side of my back and pull it up. One, keep that balance. Two, and three, and four. Squeeze that back muscle, five. Think of standing tall as you pull back. Stand tall, six, and bring it back down. Good, we're only gonna do one set of these because it's been a long workout and I wanna give you some ideas, but you can do these. Even if you're walking past the board and you have the long bands on, get on the board, give five of them each side, and then go on and carry on to what you're doing. Um, and we have this again in the chair workout where you can do these exercises with the bands by having your feet on the board, sitting on the chair and working your body, strengthening the upper body. Okay, last exercise we're gonna do. Take the right band with the right hand. It's down into this area. We're gonna do a lift, a rotation and a push and then a down. So you're gonna go to here, rotate, here, down. Up, lift, rotate, here and down. And this is another rotator cuff exercise. Three, keep that balance. So I go up, I rotate, my elbow stays where it is. All I'm doing is I'm rotating the arm from here and just rotating it up and rotating it down again. Four, I think that's four. Five, and last one, up, rotate, here, and down. Let's switch to the other side, put the band back on the hook, grab the left hand on the left band. Last exercise, here we go, are you ready? So lift up, rotate, rotate, and down. And you'll notice my elbow stays in the same plane. I don't, my elbow's not going up or down. We're here and down. Three, rotate, here and down. Four, rotate, here and down. Five, rotate, rotate and down. And last one, up, rotate, down, and we're down to the beginning. Okay, that is our workout for the day. So again, it was a long workout. I did have more stuff on here, but I'm feeling that we've done enough today to again advance knowing that you're going into the weekend. I have a new surprise that should be coming in a week, maybe two weeks at the most, where, okay, I'll let you in a little secret. We're looking to go six days a week of training. So we're gonna be having live classes in the next few weeks, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And what's exciting is the Saturday workout won't be with the board. The Saturday workout is gonna be movement without the board to make sure that everything we're doing on the board is gonna become real life. So the exercise we're doing here, we're gonna start getting better movement without the board because again, this is created so you can go outside safely and live life, seeing the beautiful world that we do live in and at the same time being safe in your home to become more active because why not? That's it. Why not be more active when you can be? Because life is all about creation. It's all about creativity. And it's all about having the ability to do the things you want to do. And anybody that's held back should be given the freedom again to get out and do that. Okay, here we go. Step back off of the board. Just want to go through a quick little cool down. We work the shoulders a little bit today. So what I want you to do is take your arms and just flap them across. Just here. And all we're doing is we're creating again a movement that's about freeing up the shoulder joints, you'll notice, and coming across as a little stretch down each side, and then up is the freedom of movement, just that little stretch, good. And come and stand still, roll those shoulders back. Now, one of the things I want you to do is push forward, so feel the push and squeeze back. Push forward, squeeze back, watch. Push forward, 
squeeze back. Push forward, squeeze back. So we start strengthening the front muscles, strengthening the back. Don't be loose, be strong. Good. Now just shake those shoulders up and down just a little bit. There you go, good. Okay, next exercise we're gonna do. Take your right arm, take it over your head. See if you can touch your ear. See if you can touch the ear, there you go. And all I want you to do is just let your head fall slightly to that side. So my head is against my bicep and I'm getting a little stretch on this side. If you want a greater stretch, take your left hand and push it down the side of your leg. Good, take the arm down, take the left arm up, let the bicep touch the head, see if you can feel your ear and then just let the head just hang nice and easy and push the right hand down if you want an extra stretch. You don't need to do it. There you go, just feel that stretch, good. Bring the hand down, shake those legs out. What I want you to do now is just turn your head to the right, bring it to the center, turn your head slowly to the left, feel the stretch in your neck. Now we do something a little bit more advanced. I'm gonna come closer to you. I don't need to stand all the way back there for these exercises. I want you to turn here. Now see as you're looking, if you can drop your chin and touch your shoulder. If you want to watch one time, you can, but I'm thinking you could do, just join in. Turn your head, look to the side. When you're looking to the side, drop your chin and see if you can touch your shoulder and up. Let's do it one more time. Go to the right, touch your shoulder, bring it up. Go to the left, drop your shoulder, bring it back up, and we're good into there. Okay, next thing I want you to do, take your hand forward, bend your fingers, and let it roll through your body. So you're going to go through here. Okay, I'm just messing around. That's not a stretch. Okay, next thing I want you to do. We call them butt kickers into here. I'm trying to think, um, yesterday, uh, Kathy was calling them hamstring curls, which is great. We don't want to put any pressure onto the hamstring. Don't even use it. We're just stretching out those front thighs into here. There you go, just in here. Now, bend your knees slightly. And what I want you to do is round your back. So you're gonna bend your knees, butts out like, and just round your back and bring it forward. Round your back, you take some of the pressure off of your back, feel that stretch and then release it. Again, round that back. And last time, just round that back. Perfect, and come back down. Take your feet slightly wider apart. Move back just a little bit if you need to and just drop those elbows. Hold on to the poles and drop those elbows and drop your head and feel the stretch down your hamstrings. If you want to move your hands down the poles a little bit to get more of a stretch, you can, but safety always first. You only need a little stretch. You don't need an extreme stretch. And come back up. Bring your feet slightly closer together. Now we're gonna do the same stretch but with our feet together. Again, just feel that bend. Your knees are very slightly bent. Drop those elbows and now straighten your legs. Oh, that feels so good. Last stretch we're gonna do, take the ball of your foot Place it on the edge of back edge of the board, push the heel to the ground and feel the stretch in the calf. And go to the other side, ball of the foot on the board, push the heel to the ground, bend your left knee, feel that stretch in the calf. And push back, here we go. Put the right ball of the foot on the edge of the board, heel touches the ground, bend, bend, bend. Is there anyone called Brenda? Because I could pretend I was trying to say your name, but I was actually trying to say bend. Push that knee forward, good, come back. Last one, left foot, ball of the foot on the edge of the board, heel is on the ground, bend your knee, push it forward. And there you go, okay. Oops. So there we have the workout. Duresha, it's good to see you again. I haven't seen you in a while, Duresha. Where have you been? You've been traveling? It's amazing. You know, there's, there's so many places to visit and maybe you're out there as well. 
Kathy Stevens just signed in to watch. See what happens, she becomes the guru and now Kathy just shows up at the end of class because right now she's the one that, uh, she's the superstar now. Kathy, thanks for showing up and giving you a moment. I'm gonna wave to you in here. Um, oh, Kathy, you were here the whole time? Great workout today, you love the joke. There were no jokes, I was serious the whole time. What are you talking about jokes? I never joke in this stuff. Um, I'm just going back, Wendy, thanks for laughing. Um, Barbara, you said, now you can laugh at your iPad. So uh, I'm going to laugh. But no, I just love the fact that you guys interact and you're going back and forward. George Brennan, um, that's awesome. Great to see you. You're going to do this later. Let me know how it goes. I hope you have a great workout and know that even though we're not live when you work out, the energy is always live. And so, you know, we're here cheering you on. Great stuff. Uh, can I say big man? I know you're a big man. Um, Rose, you're watching. Matthew, uh, well, it's not Matthew, it's Duresha. I've already seen that message, said hi to you, but I'm going to say hi to you again. It's always great to see you. Deborah, thanks so much. Big thumbs up to you. Have a beautiful rest of the day and a long weekend. Chad, um, uh, great. You said great workout, more wobbly than you thought, but you're doing great things already. You're doing great, I'm telling you. This is where people get a little confused, and I often reach out and talk to people. Being wobbly does not mean you're unbalanced, it means you're working on your balance. See, it means that you're working on finding your middle, because no, no wobble means you're perfectly balanced. That comes from alignment, it comes from muscle recognition of pressure points. But you're working on your balance when you begin to go off and come back again. That's reaction, because think about it, every time you walk down the street, when you go from one foot to the next, you're in a position of changing your balance because your weight is changing side to side. But you end up being in the middle because you're learning where those pressure points are. So don't worry about being wobbly. It's amazing that you're here saying, I'm gonna keep trying to find that middle because that's your balance ability. So great stuff. Uh, Pat, great workout, you're awesome. Um, always, it's always great to see you here. Thanks so much. Um, Linda. Uh, thank you so much. You're an incredible person to work with um, because I know that you're working. That's what I love about it is um, all of you are here doing it and nobody can make you better. It doesn't matter how much you pay somebody else to make you better. Only you can make yourself better. And that's what's so important. And that's why the more you learn about 60 Up, and the more people become ingrained into 60 up and the fact that we're here to serve you, you'll realize how we truly care. There's no one at this company that doesn't care and wants to go the extra mile because it was created because we want to help people. And sadly, there's people that are out there that, that don't believe in us yet. Um, and that's normal. People are always skeptical. I'm sure some of you were skeptical before you bought the world. Well, oh, this is going to work. You try it. You hope it's something that's real. We know there's a lot of things out there that aren't real. Um, and the more you know us, we're a really close family. And again, we launched this because we wanna help. So your success is really our strength. And so we're all here for you. So thanks so much. Um, Kathy, you were here earlier. You were there earlier with cannibals? What are you doing with cannibals, Kathy? That sounds like kind of, do you need me to call someone? Are you okay? Are they, I'm like worried about you. you is that, a, are you reaching out for help? It's, uh, Linda, oh, Linda, were you, did you do ballet before? I, I was a ballet dancer. Um, it's funny, because I was always, people would say you're a ballet dancer, and here I was, I had the shaved head, I had the muscles. I was going through military training when I first started, um, and people don't realize the power and strength of ballet and the movement. I try and get my professional athletes to do some ballet movements as well. It's incredible, so you're most welcome. We can do more of them if you want, because I could, uh, it brings back memories, but I know the strength. Joanne, thanks so much. Um, we haven't really interacted too much in the past, but I hope to get to know you better. Um, and thank you so much for being here and keep coming back because again, your energy adds to everything that we do. Oh, Linda, you're a ballet instructor. Did we connect on that before? I think we did connect on that before. Um, when, when we talked about ballet, now that I think back on it, ballet is amazing, It's uh, as I just said. so. Thanks to you for all you do and giving normally young girls, but there's guys now as well that see it as a legitimate uh, athletic and dance form.
for giving them the dreams because I know my sister was a professional ballet dancer. She went at the age of 12 to a place called Bush Davis. Um, and Bush Davis Ballet School was a um, boarding school for people that were, all they do is ballet. I mean, they do other dance forms there, but it was a great ballet school. My sister was an incredible ballet dancer. And now she's gonna become an instructor for 60 Up as well and use all her ballet knowledge and balance and movement to start teaching back in England. So I'm really excited to integrate her. And again, I got the hugest, biggest admiration. I think I may have told you, my ballet teacher was a gentleman by the name of Richard Glaston, who was the head of the Royal Ballet at the English Ballet, the Royal Ballet back in England, in London. An incredible teacher, fantastic guy. Anyway, that's me babbling on. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, have a fantastic weekend. Again, we're going to be starting adding new classes coming in so you can pick and find the instructors that are best for where you're at. And every instructor brings their own personality. When, when I bring people in, I tell them there is no rule that you have to be a certain way except be yourself. You're being brought in to be an instructor because you're great at what you do. Don't change. Be everything that you are and have fun doing it because that's what we want for you. We want you to be exactly who you are. As, as a, I don't wanna say a student, as a, as a part of our family, we don't want you to change. We want you to be everything that you should be and be proud because the only thing that's unique about you is you. Everything else, if you try and copy someone else, you've lose, lost the one thing that makes you you. So every instructor will be themselves, bring themselves to you and I want you to have fun with them and find everybody, find something unique that helps serve you. Anyway, have a great weekend. Don't forget the one tip for the weekend. If you want to drink, open the top first. It's a little hard when you're here and uh, trying to drink. Anyway, that's my tip for the day. I'll see you on Tuesday. Have a fantastic weekend. Stay cool, the heat's coming back. Hydrate, 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 and love to you all. Take care, bye-bye.